Jared, talk about the challenge this week going up uh, against the Falcons. Yeah, good defense, really good. Um, some players that have been really good for a long time. I think first you see, you know, Grady Jarrett obviously has been really good for a long time. To me, uh, AJ Terrell is really good. Jesse Bates really good. Um, then a lot of guys sprinkled in there that can play as well. But those three guys have been uh, at the top of the league for a long time. How much of this preparation is still about you guys and not really, you know, all on on them? Yeah, of course it always is. It always is. But you you, you prepare and you get ready and see what they do on film and then. Um, mostly focus on yourself and make sure you're executing and doing what you're supposed to do. And um, if we trust our rules, usually things fall into place. A lot of new, a lot of the new uh, parts coming in on both sides of the ball this week. I mean, how about the trust factor? Yeah, we trust everyone. It's, this is the National Football League. You guys have to step up. There's no way you're going to stay healthy all year, and every team's dealing with it. And um, the teams that end up at the end deal with it better than others. So we got we to deal with it well and uh, move on. Seems like they run a lot of different defenses in Atlanta, just like compared with that multiplicity and those safeties back there, kind of what do you have to be aware of there? Yeah, it's, you know, obviously a new coordinator, and um, they have some, uh, I don't know, the multi multiability to them, you know? That's, that's, not, a, that's not a word, but, uh, yeah, multiplicity. There you go, multiplicity, where they can do a lot of things. And, um, yeah, I'm sure they'll have something new for us. It's only week three, so there's only so much stuff that they could have done in the first two weeks, so... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what their wrinkle of the week will be. During this back-to-back -back year working with Ben Johnson and Mark Brunel, how has that allowed you guys now two games in to make adjustments from game to game, uh, whether that's communication or on-field? What, what's that been like, that relationship? Yeah, well, we've got experiences against certain defenses or certain looks and um, certain plays we know to get to for certain things. So. You know, uh, we don't have to so much do it on the fly as much as we kind of know what the answers are now. And, and sure, some new things will come up every week as far as how you want to do things. But uh, for the most part, we know what our answers want to be and um, can get to them pretty easily throughout a game. Can you just talk about Jameer Gibbs a little bit from week to week? I saw him grow from week one to two now. Should have a heavier workload yeah. than three. But just I mean, I think back all the way to OTAs with him, like just his growth and um, – you know, his, his route running ability, obviously, and his, his catching ability has, has gotten so much better and continues to get better. And then just, you know, obviously handing him off the ball and, and seeing his vision get better as time has gone on. And um, he's a hell of a talent, a guy we rely on. And um, I think he's done a really good job through his first two games. I'm sorry if you've already been asked this, but if Amon Ra, David, they were both out today, how does that change the offense or kind of maybe how you guys have to go about accomplishing what you what you want to accomplish on yeah, the field? It's always next man up, and those two guys are important players for us, but um, we've got guys behind them. If, if they can't go, that, that will be ready to go, and um, we'll see as we get later on in the week. But, uh, yeah, it's always next man up, and um, guys will be ready. And Dan said something today. He was talking about both, you know, the the loss and, and dealing with the injuries. And he said, no one, you know, it sucks. Everyone, no one wants to lose, but we're built for this. You know, the adversity of the situation. Yeah. Him specifically. Why, why do you think he's Dan? Yeah. Why do you think he is built for something like this? What does he? Yeah, do? I think he kind of, you know, represents our team in a lot of ways. Like we've been through a whole lot worse than than this. You know, we we lost a tough game. We played, you know, played well in parts. Didn't play well in other parts, but. Um, you know, we have some stuff to, to get better at and some stuff that we, we like that we can draw on and, and try to use, use to for the next week. But, yeah, it's a, um, it's a reflection of our whole team, I think, and he's, he's a tough guy. I'm sorry? I'm using it all one and one and people think the sky's falling. Like, how far are you guys have yeah, gone? You know? Well, sure. I mean, yeah, we'd like to be 2-0, and oh, and one and one's better than 0-2, oh, and 2-0 and and oh is better than 1-1. One one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, next week, uh, you know, 2-1 and one will be better than, you know, 1-2, uh, and two, and we want to be 2-1. and one. <laughs> I yeah. just meant how, you know, it's a sign of maybe how far you guys have come to. Yeah, like fans I don't know, like, yeah. Oh, wow. Sure. Yeah, we would like to win the first one at home. I think that's the whole thing. But um, now get another opportunity in front of the fans. A couple of Panay Sewell for you guys. You lose someone like Taylor Decker, and yeah. then you got someone like that slide in. Yeah, having him have the ability to go over to the left and not really miss a beat is pretty uh, impressive. And, um, again, a guy we rely on and uh, has done a hell of a job at both right and left tackle throughout the years I've been with him. I know he hasn't played yet, but Jeff Okuda for them. Since you yeah. might have seen him in practice, just yeah. What will it be like? This? Yeah, it'll be it'll be good. I like Jeff. I've always liked Jeff, and um, unfortunately it didn't work out for him here. But um, I wish him the best of luck in Atlanta. And, and if he plays, yeah, it'll be fun to compete against him. I know he'll be ready to go, and um, I always wish the best for him. For the rest of y'all career, you're on Bijan. Y'all gonna hear the comparisons, man. So yeah. have you watched what he done? Has that kind of been yeah. a yeah, motivational? Yeah, I've been watching him as well. Yeah, yeah Atlanta, they've done a great, a great job using him. You know, with his skill set. You know, he could do, he could do pretty much everything. And it's really impressive. You know, with his size. You know, being 220, so and can move like that is very special. So. How old is he? 
Uh, yeah, I know, I know, him, I know him pretty well. You know, my uh, coach from Georgia Tech. He was my coach for two years. Then um, he went to Texas to coach Bijan. So uh, yeah, I got to know him through through my coach. You know, we uh, where's we at? Um, you know, talked to him some at the when we was in LA for the, like the rookie premiere. You know, and the game last year, Texas. You know, I've then first time I seen him was All American game in high school. So that's where I first met him. So is that like a measuring stick for you though? Know, to Kind of motivate you a little bit in the process of having another, you know, running back in your same class as well. Like, uh, doing, doing. I mean, I'm only focused on myself, you know, mm -hmm. what, uh, on my, with my ability, what I could do, what I can control. So, you know, but I do pay attention to him, though. You know, I do watch him because that's my boy. So I'm always, I'm always going to support him. So, so you want to be the best rookie running back on the field Sunday? Huh? You motivated to be the best rookie running oh, yeah, back? On yeah, the field? of course, of course. You know, I'm always motivated to be the best player I could be. So. Excited about a potential more opportunity too. I know we talked about that last week a little bit too, but with David dealing with, dealing with obviously they're going to look to you for, for a little bit more. Are you excited about that opportunity to play a little bit more, show a little bit more, carry the ball yeah, a little bit yeah. more? Yeah, you know, you're always going to be excited, you know, when you get to play some more and touch the ball some more. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be pretty amped up for that one. Yeah. Who's David said to you maybe this week, knowing that you might have some more opportunities? Uh, he's told me just beat me, you know. Um, told me I've done a great job so far, you know. He's yeah, basically he said keep beating me, and whatever I need help, he's gonna he'll help me if I got a question. Well, it's not often that you know a team's got a guy with 64 games played, 37 starts that can just kind of step right in and, and, and not lose a beat. Just talk about obviously the the difficult situation of losing CJ, a, a guy who's been pretty good, but also your opportunity to be able to step back in there right. and, and do what you do. Definitely, it's a tough situation uh, losing CJ. He definitely brought a different aspect to our team. Uh, his energy, his enthusiasm is definitely going to be missed. Like I said, he was definitely a great player for us. Um, for me, I just look at it as a great opportunity for me to come back. From, from Considering I'm coming back from my injury, and like I said, it's a special week for me considering the week of the same week I tore my Achilles. So it's such a blessing for me, and I'm just looking at it just to capitalize on the opportunity right now. one day to the year that it happened. I mean, do you see some, some poetry you sort of like – I, honestly, I'm a very spiritual man, and uh, like I, I believe in God very, very heavily. And like I said, I just feel like this is all God's plan. You know, He took me away from the game last year at this time, and He's bringing me back into the game in in this situation. So, like I said it's just a great, great, uh, great spot to be in. And like I said, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Let's talk about the challenge that they pose, especially running the football trace. I mean, they want to get north and south. I mean, even you guys on the back end have got to really, really be good about you know, stopping the run this week, right? Yeah, they have a great team. Uh, like I said, what they do is uh, they run the ball very well. Like I said, they got a lot of great players who, when they get the ball in their hands, they can be dangerous. So at the end of the day, our job is to go out there, SQ, stop the run, and keep them very conservative. And like I said, we, we should be able to come out with this victory. To be honest with you, it wasn't the best situation, but like I said, uh, it, I just had to learn that that was my new role at the moment, and like I said, I had to just take what it came with it, you know, after talking with the coaches. That's just the decision that they decided to make, and like I said, I'm a team player. At the end of the day, I'm just going to support whatever the coaches make and whatever that decision is. Like I said, I got to just come out here and do my job because I still have a lot of guys, and I still have a role on this team. And, I said a lot of people rely on me, so they rely on my energy, they rely on my feedback, even when it comes to the game plan. Even though I'm still, I still wasn't playing those first couple weeks, I still had input on the game plan. So at the end of the day, I just got to play my role and just be the best team player I could possibly be. And we're going to see you more than we've seen you in a long time. So Oh, I feel great. No, nah, no. Nah. As a, as the same, I'm the same player. I actually, I feel like I'm better than uh, when I got hurt. So, uh, like I said, it's it, it, I got to take the good with the bad. You know, it sucked being away from the game of football last year the way I was, but at the end of the day, I was able to learn and develop and grow mentally, physically, and emotionally. So, I said I'm a lot better in that aspect, and that's just why I feel. Definitely. Well, like I said, every day, and even when they made the switch to put Chauncey with the ones, uh, like I said, each and every day, I was always reminded and told myself that I still got a key component. I'm a key key guy and a key component to this team, and 
Like I said, they're going to rely on me one of these days because everybody knows this is football. Injury's going to happen, and like I said, it's the next man up. And it's just it's, a, it's an unfortunate situation, but like I said, it's the next man up. So I got to capitalize on my cap, on my opportunity right now. I think they introduced the offense the beginning of the game yeah. last, last week. week yeah. So defense this yeah. week. Yeah. So uh -huh. what will that be like a year? You know, you mentioned it just a year away. The atmosphere that that's going to be like there, needing a victory. Yeah. What's that going to be like running out the time? And honestly, it's going to be very emotional for me. Uh, like I said, it's going to it's going to definitely spark some emotions and some some feelings. But at the end of the day, I still got to go out there and play ball. But I'm going to be so happy to fly around. And like I said, y'all going to see 21 back out there. And 21 going to make a lot of plays. From what you saw in the film, what can the defense do to get back on track this week against uh, the Dolphins? Easily. Uh, wipe away a lot of uh, mental errors that we made. And like I said, we just got to clean up the little things. It's communication. And we'll be fine. Like I said, it's... It, we beat ourselves that game. Uh, true enough, Seattle, they, they have a great team. But like I said, when we watched the film, it was so many mistakes that we personally made that, and that cost us that game. So for us, we just got to eliminate our mistakes and fix ourselves, and we'll be fine. Tracy, any thoughts on Bijan? Just what you've seen from him so far? And, you know, that offense right there, one of two teams, I think, that has the first round pick at tight end receiver and running back. So how hard they are to, to handle with the running game and the skill they have? Like I said, they're skilled players. They have some dynamic players over there. And, like I said, they're scary when they get that ball in their hand. And so for us, we just got to, like I said, I give mad respect to those guys because they're hell of players. And for us, we just got to go out there and play our ball, play our type of our style of football, and we should be fine, like I said. And so and then it all comes down to what we do and how we execute our assignments. What ways do you feel like you're better post-injury? Like I said, mentally for me, for sure. Um, like I said, just the way, I, to be honest with you, the way I handled the whole situation from my role changing, that's, that's one prime example. I would have probably been a lot more pissed off before I got hurt if that would have happened compared to when I got when I came back. So at the end of the day, like I said, just little things like that has made me better. And, you know, I understand life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond. So some things is just out of your control, some are, some are out of your hands, but at the end of the day, it's all about how you respond and how you bounce back from it. And thank God, but look at me now, you know, so I'm very blessed.